Hey everybody, and welcome to the next Park playthrough. Now it's been quite some time since the last one where we finished off Funtopia, um, so it feels good to finally get stuck into the next scenario on the list, which is Arid Heights. Uh, if you're new around here, um, firstly welcome and thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, what I typically do on this channel is Park or Scenario playthroughs in the original RCT. Um, I do play around in Open RCT too a little bit, um, because I, I've been participating in a few DKMP uh, mini contests of late. Um, I quite often do ride recreations, and I also put together the odd tutorial video here and there, or hints and tips videos, I guess. Um, but yeah, park and scenario playthroughs in the original RCT makes up about, I don't know, about 70% of the content on this channel. Um, so yeah, that's typically what I what I get up to here. Um, I generally try and make my parks look as realistic as I possibly can, um, which can be kind of hard with the limitations of the original RCT, but I, I really enjoy kind of maximizing um, the time given in the scenario and the limited kind of scenery pieces and rides that you're given to start with. Anyway, yeah, so onto the park itself here. So Arid Heights is the third scenario in the Loopy Landscapes expansion pack. It's a pretty popular map because it was really the first resemblance of any sort of sandbox park in Rollercoaster Tycoon with um, uh, no financial limits and a, a pretty big wide open space to work with. Um, so it took me a while to figure out exactly what sort of theme and park layout I was going to go with actually. You know, the sky's the limit with uh, what to do and it's uh, almost somewhat daunting in a way given that there's just, you can basically do anything you want. Um, a lot of parks I've recently done, including Funtopia actually, have been pretty well defined in terms of the, you know, overall park layout with pre-built rides and such and, you know, it hasn't been too difficult to pick a sort of theme to go with. Um, so yeah, I did struggle a little bit to make up my mind here. Anyway, I, fi I finally made some decisions and uh, what I went with to start is a big entrance mansion uh, with some pathing just kind of going down that first hill into the small oasis area. Yeah, so although the park is called Arid Heights, I still want to include a few sort of lush oasis areas scattered around just so it doesn't look like a complete barren wasteland. I mean, I think some... Uh, with the original RCT, um, it's you're better off getting some trees and shrubs involved if you can to add to the scenery. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do there. Um, before I hit the scenario objective of 2,000 guests, um, I'll be trying to fill the map out completely. So as I progress, I might have to use some tricks so that I don't hit the guest number like um, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably not open all the rides as I go, for example, or I'll, I might have to block off the entrance path so guests can't actually get in the park for a while. Just, yeah, because I don't want to fill out the map. Oh, sorry, I do want to fill out the map before I uh, finish the objective, just so, uh, you know, I can have a kind of complete looking park. I don't want to have anything half finished. Um, I'm going to try and implement a few different themed areas as I go. Um, since there's so much space, I've definitely got um, enough room to fill in um, multiple themes. Um, this will also depend on the scenery I unlock as I progress through. Um, so ideally I, I'd like to implement a water park area if I can. Um, I definitely want to do an Egyptian themed area. Um, and I think a Wild West or mine themed area, um, possibly with some sort of quarry with a mine train coaster going through it or something like that. Uh, would be pretty cool, um, and a mini jungle or Jurassic area out near the the kind of swamp land out on the edge of the map would also be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, of course, as I said before, it depends on the scenery that I unlock. Um, so yeah, um, the entrance area, as I kind of touched on earlier, was just uh, I was kind of going for a nice little calm area with a couple gentle rides. Um, I uh, yeah, put in a few RCT1 style buildings just because I think having at least some sort of building is important in, in, in an RCT theme park. I mean, you're not given the walls and roofs like an RCT2, but I think it's good to try and at least have some sort of building where you, know, you can merge in some facilities and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I uh, the steel mini coaster that I built, I... 
I allowed myself to use the bank turns because they were introduced uh, to the steel mini coaster in the loopy landscapes expansion packs. So uh, yeah, I could make some nice little helix sections that hug the terrain nicely. Um, I called it June Beetle because you know it, uh, I used the ladybug trains and that seemed kind of appropriate. Gave the trains a kind of a black color. Just made the track kind of a yellow or goldy um, sort of color. Just I thought that would blend in nicely with the sandy terrain. Added a ferris wheel kind of at the top of the hill. Um, and you'll probably also notice that I put in a bit of a well, an additional body of water to the really small one at the base of the oasis. Uh, just because I, yeah, as I said kind of earlier on, I, I want to have at least a few scattered areas of water throughout this park. So um, that was my thinking there. I have tried to put in some sort of a little waterfall connecting those two bodies of water. Uh, hopefully I'll unlock the River Rapids track later on so I can, it at least looks like there's some water flowing um, between the two. Put in a thrill ride, which is the uh, twister or scrambled eggs, um, which is actually the only thrill ride that you get to start with. Go back in and do a, a little bit of kind of tidying up around the place. I just uh, do a little bit of terraforming. I um, put in a few basic trees and shrubs around the place and fence off a few of the areas just because I always feel like that makes things look a little bit more complete. Um, yeah, the decorating around the, the steel mini coaster there. I'm going to definitely come back and spend some more time on that as we uh, progress through. I uh, Yeah, with the terraforming, I, I, I'm basically trying to make the hills as random looking as I kind of can or natural looking as I kind of can, I suppose. Um, so I just put in random undulations here and there. Um, put in a little viewing area near the ferris wheel there, which kind of overlooks the little um, outlet uh, little ponds there. Um, and yeah, so I guess the highlight of this part of the video is the uh, construction of the uh, arrow looper. So, I, um, so I've recently uh, done a recreation, it was actually a collaborative exercise with Hard Hat Gaming, um, where we both did a recreation of Vortex at King's Island. Um, so I was kind of in the mood to do a, uh, another arrow looper. Um, to start with, I was actually considering doing an exact replica of the coaster, um, of, well, of my recreation of Vortex, um, but it wasn't quite fitting in as well. And since this is RCT1, I wasn't, well, I'm not, I wasn't able to put in the, the kind of uh, custom or track architecture support work that I did for the recreation. So I. The first part of the of the layout is pretty much a replica of Vortex. So the drop down and then the turn around um, and then the two vertical loops. Um, but after that, it's a little bit different. It's kind of got another turn around and then, um, then a steep drop into a fast uh, high speed turn. And then that goes into a, uh, a Batwing inversion. Um, and then I Followed that up with just a few little uh, airtime hills into a, a helix and then finished, uh, finished the layout like that. Um, then I decided I wasn't... I really wanted to get some corkscrews into the layout because arrow loopers typically do have um, a, a pair of corkscrews. Um, so I really wanted to get that into the layout somehow. And I, um, I was going to do that just before the, the station platform. Um, but I figured that they might fit well in between um, that high speed turn and the airtime hill after the Batwing. And I think it looks really good where it is, because it fits kind of you know, right in the middle of the two diagonal sections of track. And then the, one of the, corks, or the second corkscrew goes over um, the start of the uh, climb into the air, airtime hills. So, yeah, I think it looks really good there. Um, I was really happy with how that turned out. Um, the station building was just a you know typical RCT1 style station building. It doesn't look that great, but I think it's about the best I, I could have done. I might go back and change the roof uh, later. I also couldn't really think of a name for the Arrow Looper, so if you've get, got any good suggestions, uh, please let me know in the comments. What I really wanted to do was connect up the two oasis areas, so the small one near the entrance and then the large one near the edge of the map. So I uh, had a kind of a stream or a river, which I'll, uh, I'll decorate more nicely as I go. 
Um, but anyway, I think that's going to be just about it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.